Understanding that markets and the economy moves in cycles, it's obviously critical to know where in that cycle you are. But once you understand that, it then gives you a projection as to where the markets are likely to go over the next given period. Well, let's take a look now in some more details about uh, cyclical analysis uh, with Akil Patel uh, from Property Share Market Economics. Akil, good to talk to you. Uh, we've spoken to you before about this and, and your cyclical um, attitude towards the markets. It's a fascinating topic. And I thought it's a really good time to catch up with you as we go into the back end of 2021 uh, with these headwinds that are beginning to build in the market uh, and look at 2022. First of all, if I can, I'd like to go back to the beginning and ask you to explain a little bit more about the cyclical analysis that you use. OK, um, uh, thank you for having me on the show again, Jeremy. Uh, it's good to be here. So essentially, economies move through 18-year cycles of boom and bust. It's typically 14 years up, four years down. And the 14 years up is uh, often, um, uh, an, on average, split into two seven-year segments interrupted by a mid-cycle slowdown. Uh, the first half is usually recovery from the previous uh, cycle low, uh, and then you have an expansion, you come into a mid-cycle recession, and that sets the scene for the much more expansive, bullish, uh, and in some cases, speculative second half of the cycle, uh, which runs to a peak, uh, and then you get uh, a really major financial crisis, which takes several years to play out. Okay, well, the next obvious question is, is where are we now in, that, in this current cycle? Yeah. Uh, great question. So we started the current cycle around 2011, 2012. We had uh, pretty much bang on seven years of expansion. Um, markets went up slightly uh, longer than that into early 2020. We obviously had the recession of 2020. Uh, clearly, it was exacerbated by the COVID pandemic. But uh, as I think I said last time I came on, uh, we were very much slowing down at the end of 2019, and we would have had probably some kind of slowdown anyway. Um, it ended up being probably the shortest recession in U.S. history, despite the sort of uh, the initial fears that we were entering a new Great Depression. And we're now starting the second, much more speculative, bullish half of the cycle. Uh, and uh, I've forecast the peak, and I've you know been doing this for about the last decade to be take place. Uh, in about four years, around 2026. Now you say you've been doing this, you've been doing this for the last decade or so, but in fact these cycles go back a um, couple of centuries, don't they? I think in you know we we can track them back that far. Is that correct? And if that is correct, you obviously convinced by where we are in this cycle. Just first of all, going back in terms of history, is this dictated by what we've seen over the last? 200 years. Are you confident in that data? Yes. So you can trace it back to at least 1800 in the US and the US market and the US cycle is the biggest and leads the rest of the world at the moment. Um, and, that, and that was done in, in my friend's book, this uh, Phil Anderson, The Secret Life of Real Estate and Banking. Uh, you can trace it even further back in the UK because we're a slightly older country. Uh, and that's been done by an economist called Fred Harrison. Uh, so you have very much the historical evidence there behind the cycle. Uh, and then it was a question after 2011 to uh, to track what was happening and relate it back to the cycle. And, you know, to be honest, it's been like clockwork. And indeed, uh, on my website, which I think you've seen, there is uh, a property clock, which basically illustrate, illustrates what happens at each stage of the cycle. Um, after the mid-cycle slowdown, you get uh, uh, governments enacting a huge amount of stimulus, particularly in infrastructure, which we're seeing at the moment. And that creates a land boom, a property market boom, uh, which takes the cycle to its peak uh, 14 years after the expansion started. Yes, indeed. Uh, I was drawn to that on your website, propertyshareMarketEconomics.com, because that interactive clock is quite neatly um, giving you the details about the, this, this cycle uh, analysis. Let me put it to you that we are facing some headwinds at the moment in the markets. And where we're standing at the moment, we don't know yet what the outcome is of COVID-19. We keep on getting these new variants. Clearly, uh, there is this most worrying development, but it seems like a, a rather more mild development than many have been forecasting. Uh, we've got a bump in the road in the Chinese property sector. Specifically, I guess you're most interested in that because it could have ramifications for the property markets around the world. Uh, 
a la Lehman Brothers, possibly, maybe. I don't know whether or not that's something in your books. Uh, and uh, the other issues are, of course, rising inflation. And we've only just heard from the Fed that it intends to unwind QE at double the rate it first thought it was going to do. So clearly, all this money that's going onto the market, which I guess is partly responsible for this big buildup in stocks that we've seen, some of that's going to be taken away. So if you take away a prop, it becomes less certain about the outlook from where we are. How confident are you that possibly this time next year, we're going to be possibly better off in the markets than where we are at the moment? I mean, it's it would be fair to say in relation to the stock market uh, and the cycle that uh, it's not simply markets going up for 14 years in a row. Um, there are always, and in, in each previous cycle bears this out, so there are always... Um, you know, phases when, you know, markets correct for, you know, a few months or in case, in some cases, the mid-cycle slowdown for a, for a couple of years. Um, having said all of that, I think, first of all, we're ascribing a bit too much agency to central banks. They tend to react to events rather than drive them. Um, and so I wouldn't necessarily characterize what we've seen over the last couple of years is simply down to stimulus. It's also because uh, there's a fundamental shift in the economy, much more digital. We're moving to much more green. That requires a lot of investment. In some cases, it reduces costs uh, and overall improves uh, or will improve company earnings. Stock markets tend to be ahead of economic events. Uh, so in that sense, the economic fundamentals are very strong. In addition to that, you know, people are still buying and selling houses. We're still building infrastructure, which is tends to be very good for the productivity of an economy. Having said all of that, um, yes, I think the removal of uh, easy monetary policy by the Fed and other central banks will have an impact. Now, it tends to be the case that markets price these things uh, in advance if they're known about. And I think there's probably no economic variable that's been talked about more in the last six months than interest rates uh, and inflation and what the Fed is going to do about it. And so I'd be very surprised if the market uh, didn't anticipate some of that. Uh, the Chinese situation is indeed um, a bit of a uh, new sort of feature within this current cycle. There's always something new in each cycle. Uh, and China simply wasn't particularly big in previous cycles. Now it's, you know, in, by some measures, the world's largest economy, uh, but certainly the world's second largest um, it does seem to be the case that Evergrande uh, 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 kind of has been contained. Um, it wasn't necessarily, um, you know, it's not necessarily something that the markets are particularly happy with. And there's, I think, some fear that there will be other property developers that might go the same way. Uh, so then I, I would expect in the next sort of 12 months there to be some rumblings out of China, which might spook the markets. Um, and indeed, you know, the, the combined... Uh, sort of uh, the combination rather of of that plus tightening um, plus potentially quite a messy election mid mid cycle election uh, process in the US in the summer might cause markets to correct. I mean, it would be reasonable given how far they've gone up uh, since the lows in March of last year. Um, and so, yes, I would expect there to be a correction next year. Uh, but I think the fundamental point I'd like to make relating it back to the cycle. Uh, and with confidence that the cycle is repeating as it has in the past, is that any particular low next year would be a very strong base uh, for a run into the peak in 2026 or thereabouts. About my uh, pedantic attitude towards what people say, just wanted you to clarify correction, because in stock market terms, a correction means 10%. Now, I'm not suggesting you're expecting an exact 10% reduction, but is that the sort of magnitude that you would expect that sort of pullback in the market? Because if that is the case, then clearly anybody that's wanting the next leg up has to wait. Um, yes, 10%. It could be a bit more, actually. I think, um, you know, markets, have, particularly US markets have gone up so hard uh, and particularly led by tech stocks. And if if tech stocks are no longer increasing, which has been responsible for quite a significant proportion of the, the more, more recent rises in the S&P 500. Um, it could be of the order of 10%. It could be a bit more. Uh, I tend to think of these in terms of how long they last. I, I would expect it to be no more than a couple of months, the kind of correction. Uh, we, we're sort of seeing at the moment that whenever, uh, and I think consistently in the bull market that started in 2009, 
uh, that the corrections, they might be in some cases quite significant, but they don't last very long. Um, and so if we had a couple of months down uh, and the markets then sort of found a low and started increasing, actually, regardless of the nominal fall, I would be, I'd regard that as quite a bullish sign uh, for the rest of the decade, or at least to the peak of the cycle. Okay, look, I can leave it there, but thank you so much indeed for updating us on, on where we are. And we're looking forward now uh, to 22, a little bit more uh, optimism uh, if you take out that bump in the road as to whenever it occurs and how dev deep it is. But 2025, 2026, looking as though it could well be in, upon your cycles, uh, the peak of uh, this current run. Akil, thank you for joining us and uh, a happy 2022. We'll hopefully join you uh, in the studio a little bit later on uh, next year. That's Akil Patel uh, from Property Share Market Economics. For more videos from us here at IGTV, join us on Twitter at IGCom, Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.